for the last few years will be summed up in just one word, Hagler. That's all changed now, thanks to Sugar A. Leonard. Here's Reg Guttridge now on boxing's most fascinating division. Marvellous Marvin Hagler won the undisputed title from Alan Minter in September 1980. He defended it 12 times and was unbeaten for 11 years with convincing victories over the hard men Duran, Hearns and Mugabe. His reign ended last April at Caesars Palace Las Vegas. Sugar Ray Leonard retired for three years, returned for the greatest comeback of all to win a split 12 rounds decision. What a tremendous round. Leonard, having fulfilled all his ambitions, announced his retirement once again. So the middleweights were looking for three new champions. The IBF title was the first on the line, with American Frank Tate, an Olympic gold medalist, battling with the Liverpool-born Michael Olajai. Billed as glitter versus gold, underrated Tate outboxed and outclassed Olajai, twice knocking him down on the way to a clear points win to become the first of the new middleweight champions. The WBA version of the title was settled in Italy last weekend when the local-based European champion from Zaire, Sambu Kalambe, defeated the American Irene Barkley unanimous points. The WBC vacant crown is up for grabs tomorrow with Thomas Hearns fighting Juan Roldan at the Las Vegas Hilton. Hearns is bidding to make history by winning a fourth world title at a different weight. His last title, a WBA light heavyweight, was brutally won against London's Dennis Andrews in Detroit. The Motor City Cobra has got him with a right hand. Oh, he's got him with a right, and that did hurt. Hearns was eventually the winner by a stoppage in the 10th. His opponent, tough Argentinian Juan Roldan, a real swinger, has made one unsuccessful bid for a title, losing to a peak Marvin Hagler, but he did briefly put Hagler down. On the same night that Hagler lost to Leonard, Roldan showed why he's again fighting for a title by stopping the high-ranked American James the Heat Kinchin in nine rounds. And Roldan produced power and purpose, but the hitman thinks he's made for it. I think that Roldan is going to come right at me, and that's going to be to my advantage because fighters that come right at me, I have an advantage of them. I'm, I'm looking down at Rodan for one thing. Another thing is I'm gonna be punching down at Rodan. And it's gonna give me a lot more leverage. And with that leverage, I can do a lot of damage. Burns can't wait to get on with it again. Duran is smiling, but they're saying it's all over around me. He won't be able to take too much more of this. His guard's down, he's fighting back. His instincts that are keeping him alive there. Oh, Thomas Hearns, a right hand! That's gotta be it! To win four world titles is something that no other man have ever done. And possibly have a chance to win another one, five. It's an unbelievable filler. And viewers in the Thames, Central, Anglia and Granada regions can see that fight live in the early hours of Friday morning with a chance for everyone to see the highlights on ITV on Friday night. But check your TV times for details. Well, Reg Guttridge is with me now. Perhaps we can chat about the, the middleweight division. First of all, can Hearns do it? Yes, uh, obviously it's a good performance. It's easier to win today with three ruling bodies. So, I mean, back to the days of Henry Armstrong when he won three with only one ruling body. But nonetheless, it is a good performance. But it's a tough fight because he's come down from light heavyweight back to middleweight. And he did lose to Leonard and Hagler, you know, when he fought them. And Roldan will give him all the trouble in the world. But the betting favourite in Las Vegas will be Hearns. And yes, I suppose he could win it on points, but a tough fight. And where do we stand in Great Britain as far as the world middleweight scene is concerned? Tony Simpson, for a start, is Well, got obviously, his Tony has back. come back with a bang with the Brian Anderson thing. I mean, he's been such a reliable fighter over the years, Nick, that, you know, promoters want him and all that kind of thing. Obviously, Harold Graham has got to come back in the picture, despite losing to Callum Bay, who's the new champion. Um, Simpson, I think, will be very marketable, and I would certainly fancy him with Frank Tate or Callum Bay. I'm looking at the European title now, and I, and I think that will that will throw me right into the top five in the world. And um, next could be a world title, and um, it wouldn't worry me who it was. I'm 11th fair and six. You know, I'm the I feel like I'm the I'm the strongest man in the world.
still a confident man. What about uh, Nigel yeah, Benn, the, the, the dark destroyer? The problem with Tony, he's got a, I saw him tonight at WBC convention, he's got a little bit of problem with the chipped elbow again. He's had to pull out of a proposed fight on November the 7th, but that's postponed and maybe he'll get back again. Nigel Benn, what is it, eight fights in a total of 13 rounds, as I remember. I mean, this fellow's a bit of a destroyer. Unbeaten, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. An ABA champion. I want to see him, in all honesty, in a slightly higher class to really judge him, but he's a very exciting fighter, and I know Barry McGuigan's very high on him. See, there he is in, in, in the gold trunks there, and then he, this fellow wanted to stand and fight with him, and the moment Ben came back, it was all over. I mean, look at that one. Straight over. Well, I've said all along that he's a bit special, and I believe that he needs much better opposition. He is no British uh, championship class at the moment. Uh, I think he'll, he'll, he'll go on to win the world title. interesting to see how Nigel Benn gets on uh, in the world scene. Now, uh, a brief word about Lloyd Hunnigan. Quite remarkable. I, I just can't tonight. believe this. Normally it's after three rounds that they make the points decision. Eight rounds is just unbelievable. If it was an accidental cut, then the fellow who's cut loses. If they decree that it was an intentional butt, then I understand why they've gone to points. But I find in this country in particular, it's really remarkable that the WBC have done that. But all their main officials were at the convention tonight. They weren't at Wembley Grand Hall. this morning, British time, in a car park behind the Hilton Hotel, Thomas Hearn set out to make a piece of boxing history. In a brilliant career, Hearns, the hitman from Detroit, has been a world champion at three different weights. That puts him in an exclusive boxing club containing just ten fighters. And now he's trying to become the only man to win four world titles. Juan Roldan also wants the WBC middleweight crown badly. Roldan, the hammer from Argentina, is the only man to have knocked Marvin Hagler off his feet. And these two fighting for the crown vacated by Sugar Ray Leonard. Hearns knows only three men have tried for that quartet of world titles before, and they've all failed. buzz now as we look to our right and see Juan the Hammer Roldan and a lot of support for him here first in the ring and so relaxed there was a, a bill here last night in the very same arena and sat just a couple of seats down from Juan Roldan and he looked absolutely unconcerned and relaxed and at peace with himself a really brave challenge against Marvin Hagler. Earns the jewel in the crown of that Kronk Gymnasium in the Motor City, Detroit. Those calm, almost detached eyes. Physically, a magnificent specimen, really. worked very hard to get that weight off. His last fight, remember, as a light heavy. Now he's come down officially, round about a stone, to make the middleweight limit, which he did quite comfortably at the weigh-in this morning. And believe you me, he will get some reception. 
Thomas Hearns going for a place in history. Emmanuel Stewart, second in the ring with him as always. Neither of these two spring chickens look at the height advantage for Hearns. Six inches and a massive reach advantage as well. So then, be sure to rejoin us here in Las Vegas for all the action in just a couple of minutes. Okay, now, we've both gone through all the instructions in the dressing room, and I assume everybody knows what they are. But check yourself at all times. Any questions for Mr. Hunger, a few seconds. Any questions, Mr. Roldan, a few seconds. Let's get it on. Come on. Here you go. the DA from Reno in Nevada let's get it on and we wait to see if Hearns can do something spectacular a la Roberto Duran when he blew his man away with that devastating right hand or if the rough tough farmer's boy from Argentina has the armory to get through to Hearns, who might just be slightly over his prime. And it's a very aggressive start from Roldan, who I remember started this way against Marvin Hagler and bossed the first couple of rounds until he picked up an eye injury. But Roldan only knows one way to fight, and that is coming forward. Often crude, no real defence. Fights in flurries, damaging his opponents wearing people down and Hans gets the big right in early on and he's got him in the first he's got him in the first Hans he's going to try and make history here and it's history being repeated because Duran was bombed early on now can he come back here Roldan Hans has got his measure he's got his distance a buzz around the car park here at the Hilton Hotel. So Roldan has thrown caution to win, paid the penalty, but he came back with a right hand of his own and there's a wrestling match. I think they're both slightly stunned because Roldan came back with a good right hand of his own. It's just like Hearns and Hagler when they had that war for the middleweight title when Hearns came out on the receiving end. But he got him so early minute to go in the first round little uppercut coming in from Roldan who is desperate to show he's got something left but Hearns will be bucked by that he said he was going to finish it early he said it wouldn't last beyond five rounds at the very most and he's done massive damage in the first round and he's been backed away onto the rope Hearns kept his tracksuit bottoms on a bit like a sprinter, a bit like a Carl Lewis, if you like, on a cool evening. But just like the great athlete that he is, he got straight into his work in devastating style. Roldan with those big clubbing awkward punches and another good right comes in from Hearns and he's something of a sitting target for that one. And again, little left this time. Brilliant round for Hearns. And he's got him again. And he might not, he might not beat the count. He can't be saved by the belt except in the last round. Bill Wayne takes him back to his corner. What a start to what could be a historical night here. Roll down in all sorts of bottle in his corner. The man in there is Tito Lectore, who looks after the great Carlos Monzon. Roll down is standing. That surprises me. But he's been placed very firmly on the seat of his pants twice. 
Well, he took a tremendous right hand, bang on the chin. He must have been shocked, but it certainly didn't change his mind any. He really goes down. It looked at this stage as if there was no way he would beat the count. But I'm surprised they didn't have him sitting down because they had some recovery work to do on him, but they left him standing uh, during the break between the two rounds here. But they must feel he's uh, recovered, but he's going to have to tighten up. He threw caution to the wind, paid the penalty twice. He's going to have to tighten up. He can't get away with this too often. Been an awesome start by Thomas Hearn. Roldan down twice and in trouble in the very opening round, in deep trouble too. And now we look to Hearn to keep unloading. And he's got him with a little chopping hook. That one was down for the third time. Roldan up very quickly. Well, he keeps popping up Mills Lane, counting very deliberately. How much more of this can Roldan take? He won't vary his tactics because he can't. Whoever said Hearns might lose his punching power after going up in the weight and then coming down and having to take off nearly a stone will be looking very embarrassed at the moment. That right hand shot is still the most potent single blow in boxing for my money. Well, Dan is always aggressive, he's always crude, but normally he boxes behind a solid defence. But he hasn't done that tonight, he's just taken every chance possible to take. He's paid three times already, but he's not changing his ideas at all. He's just standing in there trying to land one big lucky bomb. And he looks awfully tired, Roll Dan, although we're only in the second. Explosive action in the open air on his cool Nevada evening. This means so much to Hearn. People have accused him of freezing on the big occasions, the really big ones, that is. He wants acclamation. He wants to do what no other fighter has done. And he's made a great start down that road to history. Never right roll that off. You've always got to give him a fighter's chance. Hearns needs a little bit of space to throw the powerful shots. Maybe Rodan feels if he gets up close, uh, Hearns can't get the leverage. But three times he's made the mistake and paid for it. But he's still trying to keep close and rough Hearns up. He's, this is obviously the tactic that he has to use. But uh, they're not really working for him yet, although he's gotten so back into the fight here. He's got to get inside that telescopic jab that Hearns has got. Get the people in the next state, really. Accurate and sharp, and of course, ever mindful of that threat to the right as well. Roll Dan is a courageous fella. He knows no fear. And he's got a big heart, and he showed against Marvin Hagler. And he's showing once again here. Well, a better round for Roldan, who amazingly is still standing up in his corner. A much better round for him, although he didn't start too well at all. Burns dumped him with a big right hand. This is the knockdown. Yes, that was the knockdown from the first. They just showed us there. This, of course, is the second. I thought it was a little left hook, and indeed it was. Well, take your time, take your time, get the jab looking good. Jab was looking good, and I'm up with that right hand. Well, as a 15 year old, Roldan once went two rounds with a bear. 500 pound bear that wore padded up gloves. He was cut by a claw. They patched the bear up, but Roldan went two rounds and collected $10. And he must feel as though he's in there with that sort of fighting animal again, because Hearns 
has been quite brilliant and has shown his flaws early on and he's done more than scratch Roldan. Roldan has a better technique than he showed in the first two rounds and it just really, he was boxing very amateurishly in the, the first round, just throwing caution to the wind, big silly swings but now he's tightened up a little bit, he's moving in half a step at a time and here he has uh, Hearns under a little bit of pressure but this is more like the technique we expect from Roldan he doesn't do anything exceptionally well but he has a good professional technique and he did not use it in the first two rounds this is interesting now never write him off Roldan he'll, ne he'll never give you an easy fight but if hitting on the break there hitting and holding both of them and Mills Lane will have a word Roldan first to score though now Hearns, did the legs go a little bit rubbery there? Was there a little skid perhaps? He has the reputation, Hearns, if you hit him right, he'll go. I know Dennis Andrees always thought he had him down right towards the end of that momentous fight in Detroit, although there wasn't a count. Oh, a good shot from Hearns again. Hearns is doing the wrong thing here. He's putting too much power into these punches. He could land jabs and get out of trouble and win the rounds and just wait for his chances. But here he's put himself in trouble. He's letting Roldan get too close to him. And uh, this is suiting Roldan. This is not the way Tommy Hearns should be going about things. Fine recovery from Roldan. They're fighting for the title. They paid it by Sugar Ray Leonard. Thrown those little clubbing punches, and this has been a bad round for Hearns. I get the feeling he wants to end it spectacularly. I think he's relying far too much on power, Hearns. He has the ability, he has all the, the physical advantages, but he's not using them. He's trying to blast Roldan out. It was working in the first couple of rounds, but now it's time to think about things and change. This is a street fight now. The technique has gone out of the window. It's come on, I'll see you outside time. And I know back in the corner when he gets back there, certainly Hearns' his corner with Emmanuel Stewart will say this is not the sort of fight we want. But Roldan with Tito Lectore in there will say that's much better. Roldan claims to be the only man who to ever, ever put Marvin Hagler down. There was a count early on in that fight. But I must say, I thought at the time it was a slip. And I still stand by that assessment. Right, right. Okay, you're in good shape. Great shape. Okay, then get out of the box a little bit more. Okay. You're not putting nothing in front of him. Just endorsing what we were saying there. The words for Emmanuel Stewart go out there and box him a bit more. Terrific boxing occasion here in Las Vegas. Burns getting over a million dollars. Roldan a quarter of a million. But he knows that riches await him if he manages to be the man to stop Tommy Hearns from making his really He's got him with a left and Hearns is left the gun rubbery again. And Hearns is trapped in Roldan's corner. Hearns his legs all over the shop. He said don't write Roldan off. And he's come bulldozing his way back into this fight. And Hearns has severe problems. He's trying to fight his way out of them. Minute gone. Round four. Now Hearns looks to turn the table. And he's got him with a right. What a fight this is! The crowd are on the edge of their seats here. One moment, Hearns looks as though he's got severe problems, and then he turns it right round again. 
that punch from Hearns was as good as the punches that, that scored the knockdown, but Rodan seems to have warmed a little bit more to the task now, and he's taken those shots. That was a tremendous right hand. I expected Rodan to go over from that one. But it was a difficult fight to call. A lot of different views around the bars and hotels here in Las Vegas. The bookmakers made Hearns a favourite. Roldan's corner disagreed with it and put $50,000 on there, man. But that money looks gone now. And surely Roldan, even the brave man, can't get up from that. Hearns is seconds away from history. He's out. Hearns has done it. His fourth world title in sensational style. The one that he really wanted. Hearns is an all-time great. And what a fantastic four rounds we've had here in Las Vegas. He's on top of the world. He's done it in spectacular style as well. He's always lived a bit in the shadows of Leonard and Hagler. But he's done what no other boxer has ever done. World champion at four weight. Thomas, the hitman earns from Detroit. Well, I think Hearns did it the way he wanted to do it. He could have come out here and boxed nicely behind a jab. Maybe one in points, but he made it clear right from the start he wanted to blast all down out of there. He tried the first couple of rounds, almost got there. I thought it was time maybe to settle down and use his talent a bit more. But he stuck to what he was doing and ended up uh, winning by a blast out. So obviously a very delighted man. He's not doing it for the money, Hearns. He's in an age where one or two boxers will be thinking retirement. A fortune in the bank. <laughs> and the smile that says everything. The title that he cherished. A place in history that he cherished as well. Roldan's brave but fruitless challenge was ended by a massive right hand that is Hearns' his trademark. He had his dodgy moments in this round. Those long legs had wobbled. But it's punching power like that that makes him an exceptional fighter. Right on the button. And Roldan, who'd come back from similar punishment earlier on, had no reply. The hammer hammer. And now Thomas Hearns is with my American colleague, Tim Ryan. Tommy, uh, you had a sense of history about winning this fourth title. Could you have possibly have predicted you'd be in there against that kind of a bomb-throwing war? Well, I figured Roland was going to come out and put the pressure on and try to win the fight by that way, try to get me tired and then be able to go out. But I fooled him. I had more energy than he thought I would have. All right, well, Mar Marvin Hagler also fought Juan Domingo rolled in, and he wasn't too surprised at what he saw. I want to ask, I want to ask you, did you find him very awkward? I had to fight him, Marcus. <laughs> a Rodin, very awkward. I found him very awkward. That's why I had to try to change up my style. You very good, which I like. You held. That was yeah. the smartest thing you did. That's the experience. Did it already. You got it. I had to learn that. I had to learn it. Probably after the three rounds with Marvin, you learned it. Yes, I, that's something that one got to learn how to do sometimes. Because all the time, you can't beat a man's own top. The man's in the middle of punches. So you gotta learn the rest of the game. All right, Tommy, you wanted four titles, you got them. You wanted you wanted another opportunity at Sugar Ray Leonard, you wanted another opportunity at Marvin Hagler. Let's see what Marvin's got to say about that possibility. Well, I'm still evaluating the situation here. We'll see what happens. Well, at least I, I hope I want to take care of my belts real good, though, until I come back, if I come back. I hope that we can get together and do it again. That's, that's not all my wish, Marvin. Thank you. All right, congratulations to you, Tommy Hearns. Tremendous display. The first man ever in boxing history to win titles in four different weight divisions. Henry Armstrong, Alexis Arguello, Roberto Duran all tried it. But this man right here is the only one who achieved it. How do you celebrate something like this? Uh, I don't even know how to start. I'm so happy now. I don't know what to do because I have done something 
that no other man have done, even the two men that defeated me, Marvin Hagler and Ray Litter. I know that they are looking at me now. They want to come back and do it again. <laughs> so that's true. That may be one way to get them out, Javi. Congratulations. There's got to be a way. So Hearns in a class of his own. Hagler could be tempted by one final payday and the lure of retiring as a champion. And Ray Leonard could still be in that picture as well. But tonight, Thomas Hearns is the shining star in this city of dazzling lights. He'll go down in history as a boxing immortal. Good night from ringside.